on, on Volkswagen and the resolution. Uh, the uh, uh, Aldi Group uh, has uh, worked very intensively on the uh, uh, resolution. I think it's also a very accurate resolution. Uh, but we will also vote for a parliamentary inquiry uh, into uh, the uh, uh, scandal uh, around Volkswagen, uh, because the new revelations uh, we have seen in the press are worrying. Uh, we uh, asked with a group already, you remember that maybe, in the previous uh, session of the Parliament in Strasbourg, we already asked uh, for Commission uh, documents, uh, but we never have received these uh, documents of the uh, Commission. And we think it's time uh, that um, uh, for more transparency and more uh, information uh, on uh, this uh, 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 a scandal, and, and, and that is the reason that uh, the group decided yesterday uh, to uh, go uh, for a, a parliamentary inquiry on this. Because, yeah, the, the basic the initial idea was to ask to the Commission to come forward with uh, an in-depth uh, uh, investigation uh, uh, on what uh, happened on the European level. But as now apparently there are also doubts of what happened inside the Commission is a little bit difficult to ask to, to do an investigation uh, by the Commission when the Commission is itself involved uh, in, the, uh, in, 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 uh, in this case. So we're going to see uh, what is uh, uh, happening uh, tomorrow, I think, uh, when we uh, vote on, on today. Uh, or today. 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 Then the uh, uh, refugee crisis. Um, the main uh, message we're going to give today in the debate is that uh, it was a good initiative by President Juncker to organize this uh, uh, summit on the Western Balkan route and that also a number of practical steps have been uh, made. But uh, that it is also necessary to find uh, in, in parallel with this uh, agreements uh, inside the Council on, on, on the main issues at stake. The main issues at stake are, first of all, that uh, we need uh, a full-fledged European border and coast guard. And this European border and coast guard, we have to start it uh, in Greece and in Bulgaria. That's my point. If you want to dry up the Western Balkan route, you need to create your uh, secure your external border, to manage your external border, and that means a real European border and coast guard will start his activity in this crisis in Greece and in uh, Bulgaria. And in, the, the important is that um, such a, a, a border and coast guard uh, could then be responsible for registering the people for uh, also um, creating the facilities where they can uh, uh, where they can stay in, in good conditions and, and not what we have seen on the border with uh, Slovenia, Croatia, Serbia, uh, the, uh, Hungary the last, uh, the last weeks and, and, and months. Uh, in uh, these facilities, the European Border and Coast Guard should be responsible also to make uh, uh, the difference between those who are um, war refugees, um, people looking for protection on the one hand and economic migrants on the other hand, what is not happening uh, today. And then for uh, fourth point, the European border and coast guard should be responsible uh, also uh, then for spreading those who are accepted in Europe uh, inside the 28 member states of the European uh, Union. And we think that such an European border and coast guard um, is working with nationals, but also with uh, European uh, civil uh, servants, and uh, that we have to uh, put all, all emphasis, all efforts uh, on starting with this uh, upgraded Frontex. I, I call it. A, 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 it's more than upgrading Frontex with this European Border and Coast Guard uh, in uh, Greece uh, and uh, in. Uh, Bulgaria, and that is a task of all the other member states uh, of the European Union, because let's be honest, there doesn't exist a, 
a, a Greek border or a Bulgarian border. The Greek border or the Bulgarian border is also the French border, the German border, the Belgian border, the Dutch border. That's the same. It is so difficult to, uh, to, to explain, apparently, that uh, because of Schengen, um, the external borders uh, of the Union are the uh, uh, borders that are also a responsibility of all member states of the Union and not of some of them. And on top of that, uh, we are going to ask in the debate that uh, uh, the Council uh, is ready to take now decisions on uh, formalizing this uh, European border and coast guard. Uh, uh, secondly, uh, formalizing also uh, uh, his decision on economic migration, because if, uh, if you want to eliminate the abuse of uh, asylum uh, from the asylum system, you need uh, uh, a single uh, blue card system. Uh, replacing the 28 national uh, economic migration policies and, and then uh, three, uh, the Europe uh, European asylum system uh, that, is, um, uh, that is no longer based on Dublin but based on, on, on uh, a common responsibility uh, and solidarity of, of, of the 28 member states of the Union. Uh, and the last point that I'm going to address uh, also uh, is that um, uh, we have to pick up our responsibility uh, in finding a, a solution for the crisis in Syria. Um, I find it unbelievable that uh, there is a meeting Friday uh, in Vienna, in, uh, between whom? Uh, the US, Russia, Saudi Arabia and Turkey. No European Union at the table. It reminds me what happened uh, when the Iraq war started, then it was Mr. Barroso who invited everybody to the Azorn. So we are now more and more um, devaluated, I should say, uh, to the role of receptionists. Yeah. Come here in, uh, in Europe, uh, find uh, an, an agreement for uh, a conflict that is merely affecting Europe, but where Europe doesn't play any role around uh, the table. And I think that is a consequence of the fact that we don't have a common foreign policy and we don't have a common defense community. And that means that uh, when it concerns finding uh, a, a solution for this conflict, um, well, uh, the others outside Europe think that they can uh, do it without uh, the presence of the European Union, but in, uh, in Europe. I think it's a little bit, it reminds me colonial times, it was also the case then. You went to a colony, there you were deciding on the future of, of, uh, of, of the world, but uh, not in the presence of those people who, uh, in which country you were. So, that's my point for, uh, for within a few uh, moments. I have also a good comparison with the Congress of Vienna in 1815. At that moment, it, uh, it were Europeans at the table about the future of Europe. Now, in Vienna, uh, it's about the future of Europe, but without the Europeans uh, around the table. We only have time for one question. So. Um, my question then on last issue on Syria. So what is your solution? Because I don't think that one need to go so far as Vienna, because in Minsk talks on Ukraine, uh, Mrs. Mogherini is also not present. So how you see it, what is the solution of the situation within uh, European influence on Syrian crisis? Uh, very easy. <coughs> that is to give uh, a, a clear, the European Council, and they had already the opportunity to do it in the last European Council, they didn't do so. Maybe in the next European Council they can do so. Giving mandate, deciding. The European Council deciding to give a mandate to Morgherini. That's what we need. So, and, and, and we, we didn't got that in the Ukrainian crisis, and, and, and the consequence of this is that uh, it was France and uh, the French president and uh, the German uh, chancellor who went uh, uh, to Minsk, and that we created that uh, format of four. Huh? Uh, and, and, and now again, so the, the, the problem is that um, the Americans, the Russians, or, or whatever other uh, country does, doesn't take us seriously, because there is no clear, uh, decision and mandate by the European Council uh, to, uh, to give that task to, uh, to Morgherini. 
and we saw that in 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 the in, in the Ukrainian conflict, and we see that today again in the talks about Syria. So I have also today a meeting with Morgherini about uh, about uh, uh, about this in, in in the afternoon, I think. And. Uh, but this cannot continue like this. Uh, this this becomes ridiculous. Even uh, it's like a bad film, huh? bad movie. Uh, we're in, in Vienna meeting between the four, four, four on Syria, and the, and the Europeans say, yeah, yeah, use use your. Oh, we have a fantastic palace here in Vienna. Where you can do it. Go for it. And the Europeans themselves not around the table. It's completely ridiculous. I have to go because the debate is starting. Very shortly. It's, it's lack of initiative from the part of the European Union or it's our, the lack of the framework, a legal framework that is our infringement to this issue. Because it's lack, because our President Hollande was the first to step in Normandy uh, with his proposal and no, then Normandy formal. I know. I, yeah. I know it's always the same. So uh, uh, member states were thinking that they can do it better, but the problem is in fact also institutional. Uh, if we, we don't strengthen EAS, we don't give them more uh, uh, autonomy, uh, and if we don't start with the European defense community, it's, 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 it's linked to that problem. The, 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 the problem is not only a question of human beings, it's also an institutional problem. The debate is going to start now, so unfortunately we cannot take any more questions. Have a good day.